We're back looking at, uh, at processing and um, this video is going to be a little bit different than uh, previous ones in that I'm going to spend some time here looking at a processing script that I was involved with helping to write about uh, seven years ago. So it's been quite some time. So I uh, when I first opened this up, I really didn't remember much at all about uh, the thinking that went into writing it. It took several weeks to write this, and um, uh, and it uh, uh, a little bit at a time, building up how how the program would operate, and adding things, trying to figure out how to do things, uh, learning about things that uh, we didn't understand and trying to figure out how to do them and it was uh, it was qu quite uh, uh, quite the exercise now I want to show you what this code does first and then I'll talk about some of the things the considerations and what involved in writing it so this particular piece of code basically imp implements a pong game now, for those of you who may not know, Pong was, I think, the very first computer game. And it came out when people didn't even have home computers. It was well before that. And um, it uh, there was a little box that came out, and you hooked it up to your cathode ray TV and ran the program. So I thought it would be an interesting and fun exercise to try to build a Pong program here in processing, and, and that processing is a language that is specifically capable for doing something like this. So first let me run the code, and then, uh, and then we'll talk about it. So run here, and notice we have a countdown. Okay, and you see the ball going back and forth. Now the paddle on the right is is operated by the computer. The paddle on the left is controlled by me. Uh, I go up, move it up with the W key and down with the S key. Okay, now, so the ball bounces around there like that. And it bounces off the sides. And every time it bounces, oh, we get a, a, a drum sound. Now, here, I missed it. So when I miss it, the ball slides past the paddle. Uh, the computer scores one for the red player over here. Okay, so uh, the program involves um, many, many issues. And one issue is how do we generate the sound? So every time the ball bounces, we generate a drum sound. And we had two drum sounds. If perhaps you noticed, there were two different sounds. Let me play it again. You see, I'm not that good at it here. Oh. Oh. There. You see, there are two different drum sounds. Okay. Now. Okay. So, now. Some things that had to be included here is that... Um, there was actually um, a fair amount of issues regarding geometry because uh, we had to compute the ball would have an x and y velocity and we would have to compute the trajectory of the ball to determine where it would hit the side of the box and then we would bounce it okay well how will we determine if it hit the side of the box? So we had a boundary for
for the side of the box defined uh, and you remember how we set up the boundaries for the playing box in, in processing and um, here the boundaries on the box uh, were 1024 and 700 so and there all the variables in the program are um, are listed right up here in the beginning so let me go through this a little bit and explain to you where things are used um, this minimum is a library and I haven't really talked about how do you import libraries libraries are extra pieces of computer code that someone else has written that you can access in your program if you download them and install them when you're running the program so that's what's going on right here is a library uh, is has been installed in the in the program it's a sound library and then we have um, two different drum sounds that have also been downloaded and we have two variables called drum one and drum two and then we have to determine um, you know how to uh, and when to uh, play those drum sounds okay and um, let's uh, let's look at some of the variables here remember boolean variables are variables that are either true or false so we set up a bunch of boolean variables there's drum struck drum one struck drum two struck or boolean variables we set up a an array where we just recently talked about arrays uh, down keys is an array that has 256 elements um, there's a, another boolean variable twice and initially twice is set equal to false now what is twice twice is a variable that determines if the ball is going to bounce off of the sides twice before it gets to the paddle let me try to show that here so here so far it's only bouncing once once there this will bounce twice there you see it bounced off the top once and the bottom once okay and uh, this is important because you see that the red paddle on the right let's watch that again here the red paddle on the right notice that the red paddle on the right moves automatically to meet where the ball is going to be so the computer is looking at the trajectory of the ball and computing where the paddle needs to be placed and puts the red paddle there so it hits the ball now when uh, when I first was looking at this it occurred to me that indeed I could have the computer compute perfectly every time where the ball was going to hit for example put the paddle there and the red side would never miss the ball so um, in order to uh, make it so the computer could miss the ball sometime uh, introduced a uh, random number a uh, random variable into the computation so it would be possible for the computer to erroneously calculate exactly where the ball was going to hit misplace the paddle so sometimes the computer would miss the ball so that was one issue that had to arise had to come up otherwise the player can never win and uh, I rarely played this I've gotten good enough at it where I ever get ahead of the computer um, it may have happened a few times but not often okay now other variables the score the score and the numbers that appear here these are integers so we have integer score red integer score blue and they're initially set to zero now there's a whole bunch of floating point variables and probably many if not most of these 
don't need to be floating point variables. They could easily be integers. But being lazy, we just set them all to floating point variables. Notice here, the variable x and y, this might uh, specify an initial x and y position for the ball uh, when the game starts. And there was a small random component in these x and y positions. So the ball wouldn't start out exactly in the same place all the time. But the ball always initially was going from right to left, heading toward the blue paddle. Then uh, you have to quickly move the blue paddle up to hit the ball. Now, how can we calculate if the blue paddle hit the ball? Well, we had to know the x the range of x position we had to know the x position of the ball we know the x position of the paddle we'd have to know the range of y positions on the paddle so if we're tracking the center of the ball we would look at the position of the center of the ball here and uh, for and then we would subtract off this radius of the ball to get an x position for the boundary of the ball. And then we would look at the x position of that and see if it hit the front face of the paddle, if indeed the paddle was located uh, in the proper y location. So that that's how we could calculate if the paddle hit the ball, by looking at this coordinate, x coordinate, looking at the y coordinate of the ball, and the y range of values on the paddle. So it's all a fair amount of math that would go into this calculation. And, uh, but this is probably the most simple computer game ever devised, if maybe certainly one of the most simple. And uh, most uh, computer games, there's far more math that goes into it than this. So we had to randomize a bit the position of the Y paddle, which was automatically calculated by the computer. We would have to determine if the ball were going to bounce once or twice, because every time the ball would bounce off the side, the Y velocity would change sign. So if the ball would be going in this direction, it would bounce off here, it would have to start coming down. Although we kept the X velocity the same. But the x velocity would switch sign if the ball bounces off the paddle. So the ball hits the paddle, the x velocity would switch sign, the ball would start going in the other direction. So let me uh, uh, let me start playing this again so you can see. Okay, now what was happening there, it's, I, I, decided, I didn't correct it. What would happen is the center of the ball would come in and it would get locked in the two sides of the paddle. It would keep bouncing off both sides of the paddle, moving down like this, coming down, uh, until it exited the paddle. And I, I never really uh, investigated uh, why that was happening and, and how to stop it from happening. I, I thought it was actually pretty cool. So I, um, when working on this, I just decided to leave it alone. Okay, now let's come back here. So um, we have a lot of variables here. Uh, X, P, blue paddle position, X position. This is the... Um, uh, the the paddle Y position 300, the red paddle position XP2, uh, YP2, the velocities of the paddles moving up and down, the diameter of the ball, um, the width of the pad was 10, the the this is the the height the vertical extent of the pad was 100. Um, and uh, and so on. So all of this, uh, all of these things came in to calculations. Uh, as soon as the the ball would bounce off the blue paddle, 
we would immediately do a calculation to determine is the ball going to bounce once or twice off the side okay before getting to the red paddle because that would change the position the vertical position of the red paddle uh, where we're going to place it depending on how many times the ball would bounce and um, so we immediately would do some math determine is the ball going to bounce once or twice so in initially we always started out with twice being false we would do a calculation and um, and determine if it was going to bounce once or twice and then position the red paddle the computer would position the red paddle um, and um, let's see anything else I wanted to mention in here uh, as you see you look at all these are all logical if statements and we haven't really discussed these yet now it might be a good time for me to mention that um, you know if you're really interested in looking in things like this my suggestion is uh, continue going through the book and doing the exercises just the way I've been doing them in the videos you see how I do those exercises read the section of the book pull out a section of code run it um, in the processing IDE uh, experiment by changing variables to see how that changes the operation of the code and so on so it's it's not really that hard to learn you you just have to be uh, open to the fact that first time you look at something you may not understand it at all and it's going to take several times of looking at it and experimenting with it before you start to understand it it's um, it's actually the story of my life you know I'm uh, I'm in my 70s and um, you know I've been in uh, technology that whole time and technology has changed dramatically over that period of time virtually nothing I I teach today as a professor existed when I was in school uh, so I've always had to go in and learn things myself and I would do it by reading uh, doing trial and error experiments and today you have this wonderful asset of YouTube where you can put in almost any question on YouTube and you can find several videos where somebody talks about that I mean I've uh, I've fixed broken hot water heaters that way I'm sure some of you have done things like that too I fixed broken appliances I mean all and um, so uh, the, the the resources you have available to you are tremendous there's no reason why you cannot learn almost anything on your own and uh, so so uh, all of these uh, if statements in here these are all um, lines of code that are asking the question um, if the ball hits the top boundary then what do we do if it hits the paddle then what do we do um, if this happens then we play a drum sound if this other thing happens then we play the other drum sound uh, if this yet another thing happens we increment the score now let me just uh, show you one thing I'm, it's my intention to actually send you this code and um, let me point out something to you uh, if I get that make that code available what you want to do is set up uh, in your pro in your folder that contains your processing code uh, set up another folder um, and in it I ha I call it bounce 19 that's how many versions of this software we wrote in the process of uh, before we ended up with our final version here bounce 19 and uh, so you see it it took a lot a long time and then this is a folder we I want to put into the folder with the processing code which is here and this folder contains our two drum sounds we call them bongo one wave bongo seven wave and if the if this is not in the folder if not is not if bounce this and this 
aren't together in a folder that I'm calling bounce19. Uh, if they're not together in that folder, then when you, the program won't r run properly because it, the code will be looking for these sound files to be located in another folder called data. So that's just a point. So if I send you this, uh, you should be able to double click on this and then have it open up in your processing IDE and run the code. Now a few things let me mention here again. I, the way I have it set up, I use the W and S keys to move the blue paddle up and down. There, look at that. Okay, now um, let this Okay, so um, I have it set up W and S, move this up and down. And let's see if I can actually find where that's done in the code here. Maybe too much to look, too much to look through here for me to find it quickly. Okay, here. Um, th this represents actually the ASCII code for the letter of the represented by the key. So W and S um, might be these two ASCII codes here. And so if this is uh, if this key with this ASCII code is pressed, then this executes. And then it also prints out something down here. And if the key with this ASCII code is pressed, then something else executes. So that determines the uh, up and down of the blue paddle or pressing the keys. And then a mouse click is what starts the program over again after it stops, scores one for red. I click the mouse, and then it starts again. You see that right there. So now you see all the numbers coming up down here. Okay, and uh, the the program is r running out these numbers as things happen. And that was originally put in there to help me debug the code as we were writing it. And I just never took it out. And uh, so uh, that's this particular piece of code. Um, it's well, well fancier than anything that we've done to this point. And I, I taught a course to middle school students on processing. And um, we uh, had actually, you know, we had gone, you know, over a year actually and, and done. That's why we got so far into doing a lot of this. So, um, so that's how the bounce software works. And, um, and we'll get back in uh, to doing our regular format lectures using the book.